Hi, this is Dave Gimberlein, and it's February 26, 2021. This is the University of Minnesota Shokan Karate Club. We are training with live people. We are training with people on Zoom, and we are recording it for asynchronous training for people who could not make the uh, training session. So please train along. Line up. We're going to do line of two. <laughs> Technically, of course, two makes a line, right? Everybody knows that? Two points makes a line? Alright. Do it straight. classes. Yeah. Uh, we'll work on beginner stuff and then we'll do some of her stuff and then we'll do more beginner stuff and then we'll do some more of her stuff and then when she leaves we get to do just stuff for you. Oh. And John Moore. I won't forget about John Moore. Uh, push feet apart a little bit. We're going to play a little bit as we work out. Try to stay nice and straight and tall all the time. Very common, people slump a little bit. You want really, really nice small posture. Elbows in, palms up. Pull your fingers in, roll them in. Put your thumb over, put both hands out in front. Pull your right hand back to your side. Stay again, nice and straight and tall. Imagine the energy coming from your center forward. Punching, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, girls. Switch. Cross. Uh, keep it out. So, this is about hip distance apart. Keep it out just more like two. Some people go wider, two and a half. Bend your knees a lot. Try to make the outset edge of your feet parallel, but not like that. Push your heels out. And stretch down and forward. Maybe try to touch your elbows to the floor. And back. And forward, and back, and forward, and back, reach over one shoulder, push one hip forward, switch from side, and tilt to the side, sway, switch, around with your torso, big circle. Switch, way. And stop. So I said 
said this was called a Kibidach. Uh, most things have at least one English name and at least one Japanese name. So people call them different things. Uh, some people call this a side stance. Some people call it a horse stance because they like riding a big horse. Uh, Kibidach is usually the only thing they call it in Japanese. Kiba, I think, is inside. And not G for the stance. Straighten the leg. Don't keep your feet flat. Switch. 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 Switch and drop down. Switch. 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 Switch, switch, and switch. Stay on the side. Rotate, I'm like you're trying to look at this wall. And then keep going way over behind you. Let your hips drop towards the floor. And then back. And then over. And then back. And then over. I feel like they refinished this floor. Do you think it's sticky? Yes, yeah, Or and back. Switch. All the way over. Stretch the outside of your thigh. Breathe deep. Back. Over. Back. Over. Back, over, and back. Pull your feet in, sliding. Put your feet out behind you. Arch. Push your hips back, touch your chest to the floor, stretch your shoulders, your back, your neck. Pull again. Pull your feet in. Sliding. Straighten your legs and stretch down. Roll up. Run through. Switch. Side. Squeeze one knee up. Into your chest, into your center. Switch of the leg, pull your toes up. Switch. 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 And switch. Reach around behind. Let's come up. Switch. Switch. And switch. Share the leg. Turn straight and forward. And back. Yep, so that's where you can put your belt down and put your knees straight while you're over there. Um, did you guys meet each other before? I forgot. Ah, uh, I thought so. But you know, some old people just have all the thoughts. Okay. Way around over there. You move this way a little bit. Feet together. Uh, heels together with the toes out. Out. Feet apart. Stay in position. Step way out and you can match. Put your left hand up right hand to your side. Punching. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. High up again. Check out your legs a little bit. Still kind of warming up. You have to bend your legs more. 
Thank you, Dutch. That's better. Now, when you know when they start to ache, sink a little extra. Oh, yeah, that's good. Left hand up, right hand to your side. Punching again. Some people make that work, they're super flexible, but you're taking it outside of your ability to drive when you're lifting your feet. So, uh, somebody told me once, and this made a lot of sense. So first of all, it goes from your center to your feet and your knees are in between, not outside. Not outside my line, you have to be in line. And somebody told me this is like you're driving forward, but your knee to your foot stays that way. Driving, driving, driving. So it's driving forward. That doesn't, there's different things. If you go out this far, you should switch to a like a sequenachi, then this is fine. Your feet, your everything lines up. It's good and strong. There are many styles of training, so I sort of kind of got rid of it. Only in one color. But it's a fake color. Just put it in there. Let's slide this way just a little bit. A little bit. That's fine. Whoa. Back to punching. Give it up. Left hand up, right hand to your side. This time, see if you can pull down into the floor, down into the same leg that I was on that side. I'm pull down into the ground. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ski out of the punch. Ready? Eight! It was no ski eye. Spinning, so when they go and do it, 
then in the stance, they also spin. This is a muscle memory concept. <coughs> this is also a task specific exercise. So, here we go. Let's put your left hand up. In this position, you kind of imagine the edge is covering or intercepting something. You're going to pull this hand down to your hip. You're going to spin it up your arm come across your face. One. You're still looking straight ahead. This is down to the other block. Two. Spin and block. Three. Four. So you're looking this way. Your feet are a little closer. Bend your knees. Press your hip. Five. Yep. Six. Try to let your elbow come along your side and then come up to the end. Seven. Eight. Bend. Bend, bend, bend. Nine. And. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Head, 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 head. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. One. Uh, look this way. It's going to be a little more narrow. You're just spinning in place. One. Bend both knees, squeeze them together a little bit. So the weight from here goes from the shoulder down, knees down, squeeze, spin, 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 spin. So this is your arm. So like that. Squeeze your legs together and sink a little bit. Throw your drawing arm, keep your head up. So it feels like it's pulled out. Pulled, yep, like that. Harder all the way to your feet. Now do that, but make the pop up and keep quit doing it. Pull down and make pressure this way. So it's easy. Head up, push that way. That's way better because that's how your feet are. It's heavier. Three. Over down, over down. Four. Position. 
fist over elbow in the middle of your body. Again, looking straight ahead. Uh, yep, this one. Now we're going to stand up for just a second and extend this arm in front of this one. And spin and block. Line. Up. You. Up. Three. Up. Four. Up. Five. Up. Six. Up. Seven. Up. Eight. Up. Nine. Up. Ten. You are fish should be about shoulder height. There is one or two fist distances between your body and your elbow. Not five. One. Or maybe two. Depending on your mind and what size you are. This can be bent about 90 degrees, so a little bigger for you. A little bit of your arm. Yep. I just get it up. Come on, get it up. When you do this, your arm faces this way, this way, this way, this way, and then it twists. Boom. Right at the end. Here it spins around. So does this spin right around. Try a couple more. Left arm out, right arm out. Spin and block. Ah! Spin. Back up. Two. Back up. Three. Back up. Four. Got a little too much curl there. Back up. Fish. Five. A little bigger. Back up. Six, I got seven, I got eight, I got nine, I got and ten. Your wrist, thumb. Yep, I guess. Your wrist okay? I'll have that tape on. Oh, for my So usually that means your hand is too low or there's not in your belt is, you just a little higher. I think I can get the key blood along here. Yeah. Yeah. A kick. The same kick we did last time. Uh, I want to keep it just a little bit different. But for a snap kick, where you strike the ball in your foot, everybody tap the foot just a little bit like that. Okay. When you do that kick, you want to swing your hip forward towards the target as you kick. So it's kind of like that. Your kick goes out, your foot goes out. For the start though, grab one knee, squeeze it in your chest, rock back and forth. Rock, 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 rock. Go ahead, turn the foot. Squeeze in, rock, 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 rock. Toes up. Put your foot. You're gonna go one, two, three. Just let your foot fall off the back very lightly. Pick up your leg. One, two, three. Other foot. One, two, three. Other foot. One, two. Three, foot. One, two, three, foot. You have to build pressure to the floor. So if I touch you, you'll fall to the back. Go! One, two, three. Much better. One, two, three. All right, enough of that. Start here, pick your knee, you put your hands in front of you. Pick your knee up, straight your foot on the back up. Ready? Alternate leg. One, total snap, your foot on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Hey, I don't know. We will work on your coils a little bit. Right. 
I know that we're remembering how this goes. Eventually you have to establish a pace and stop wherever you're going. Cross your body. So up here and pull. Whoa! It doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're going. And then you get your feet up there. And you cut out the direction. Boom! And then you move direction. You know your pace doesn't change.
So, and there's two big ways and several variations. One is that your arms are just going in a straight line and your hips are staying straight. One is, this is one of the newer trick ways, your hip and elbow go this way, hip and knee go this way, and then you come back this way. Both are good, but they're both more the same than they are different. Uh, losing this connection is always wrong, no matter what you think you're going to do this way. But it is one of the harder ones. Like totally, people sometimes train, 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 they have to press the pass on their feet, and they screw it. I mean, so think it, believe it, do it, and it'll get better and better over time. Anything else that we do different than you, or that you want to do different than what I said? A little bit here, you tend to lean forward. It's not the end of the world. It, it's better to lean forward in this than it is to have a backward tilt. And this is usually back when people are a stance in position. So, not the end of the world. The applications are tough because this cause has been heavily modified by many people before it got short time and then short time changes in two different times. But one thing I like about you know, that one. Alright, I do like it about that one. Time for you for a minute. So here's what I'm talking about. Uh, it could be that you grab me with both hands. I'm gonna cover this so we can't let go. I'm just going to come forward and hit it. That's my whole strategy. There's nothing tricky about it. I just don't want him to hit me, and I'm going to hit him. And stepping forward is superior to standing here or stepping back or any other option. I mean, it's much better. Can you see that? So, that's that. Could also be blocking and trapping and all that, but as a concept, when you get here, that's super easy. If you choose to turn first and then come back, Let's say he's grabbing with this hand, he's gonna punch him with this hand. I don't want to get hit, so my hands are up here. But when I turn my body, it takes away that hand. See that? Then you trap it, and you come back across. Trap, hip, right? So if I just did this with my arms, I might make it. But if he's bigger and stronger, I won't. If you do your whole body this way, it's a super strong thing to do. And I would, uh, in the other side of this one, I think it's the same thing. He's trying to punch me, that's why my hands are, I hold up and turn, and I'm coming back to chop him. So I got off target just a little bit. Oh yeah, uh, this and this. Why, why this and this? If it's against the ground, a thing you can do, you can be a little stronger, is I'm gonna hit him with my knee, because it's there. I'm going to reach under here, come back, it messes them up like that. Put this hand there, and then it'll whack on the side of the neck and high, whatever you can reach. So a lot of people think this won't work. Oh, he's too strong. It totally does. This leverage, if it does, it'll touch your hands. But they it's, it's just some lots of stuff in the process. And it doesn't work as good when I stand as it does when I drop and move. It just it messes them up. You blend your body with it. So that is one application for that. And it can be the same for this big one. Oh, same, two little variations of the same problem. And it, in many of the Gojo Shios, they have both. It's just our style when we have the one. The other thing is there's weirdness. Some styles uh, start going groin, groin, groin. I don't think that's a good idea. Your fingers against here, it, it doesn't work. Neck, eyes. Um, there's a million other things. Sorry, take you over. This whole idea here, one, two, if, if I get a hold of this hand, pull across, bring it back, snap! It'll snap. Oh, it's like a, and it, it looks 
so much money. Like, yep, I would do that. That works. So, uh, there's again like a couple hours of stuff I can just keep thinking that you can do. But I like simple rather than complicated. So, coming over one arm and under the other and then out, I think that's a good idea. So, yep, come back one more time. So, if you got me one hand, this comes over, is my leg, lift it up, if I put that, I'd sweep it up. Yep. And that is a reason why you're putting the move and pull and turn, even if you're not actually doing the big sweep you think. But you can also keep putting the blind thing to do it. So anyway, if you keep your hips straight, somebody's got a hold of you, you're just putting your arms on there and working your way forward. Yep. If you twist first, you're twisting this arm here. Then you grab, then you come back. Twist. Almost. Twist. Grab his elbow. And then come over the top. And then we'll look on the like that. So a lot of times, they teach you gun. Just put your uh, left, that hand up for demonstrating purposes. They teach stuff like one, two, three, because that's what it looks like. It's a simple, oh, I get it. Could use other arm, could be lots of stuff. There are, that, that actually works, especially if you start to strike pressure points on purpose on the way up the arm, by the time you get there, it has a greater effect. But that's an easy visual arm, right? So the other stuff I think is a little more practical, although that takes timing positioning more so than Alright, you got it now, right? Okay, good. So, usually beginners learn to stand in a front stance, and a side stance, and a back stance. So that's the only one you haven't done so far. But, there's a couple others that are in the advanced process. And then this one is the cat stance. So, cat's been there a lot. The basic idea of a cat stand is mostly that somebody's trying to hurt you, hit you, punch you, something, and you went, oh! And your hand came up and there's your weight back. It's just a little more refined. You could reach that hand with your hand. Yep, that's good. One inch reflex. Except it would be the other hand, because most people are right hand. Yeah, there you go. All right, go ahead and see how that
very careful on my knees on this. Hopefully it will get better. Do you notice it or not? The floor is sticky. Yeah. I think they refinished it. And I think nobody uses it. But, you know, nobody here. Um, do you want more? Maybe facing that one. Uh, yep, there you go. Everybody move. Renee over that way. No, we'll just walk that. Feel free to make fun of her if you want. So, half or three quarters or full, whatever speed you want to do. Don't play yourself. It's still the beginning of the day. Okay. But that would involve your legs more. So, so in that particular instance, you were very light here, and there was no pressure in your leg when it came to the stuff. And I feel like if you pull, 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 it would be part of your. The second one is when you do many motions, you are way more solid. Boom! It's like, whoa, good job. And then you move. And then you try to get back, but I can see it. Oh, why would she move? You would tip over. So if you could imagine, you got that pressure. Boom! It, 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 I don't know what it does. It, it moves. Uh, one, two, one, two, like that. So you need it to be engaged all the time while you're moving from place to place. It's just anything to work on. But it's absolutely better 
when you hit yourself in the search wall. Oh, it's not a cover. Oh, it's not a cover. So we go. Thank you. Uh, five minute break, you guys can get some water and we'll finish up the class. Five minutes, John Noel. Okay. If you could move it in just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. So, we talked about a front stance before. It's supposed to be hips distance width, and quite often though, people like to go in and out with their foot. Uh, just don't step in and leave it in line because that's too much like that peg rope. You want a little bit of space. <laughs> Lots of times for beginners, they maybe teach it a little wide. And the trade off is you want stability, but you want to be able to project forward. So, in a step and punch, if I'm too wide, I'm going this way instead of this way with my body. So, I prefer to be a little more narrow. A little too wide, but sometimes it's good reasons to be wide. So we'll try some stuff. Uh, feet apart. Let's so move your left hand and your left leg forward. If you get it back, your hands are going to end up on the Alright, We're going to step forward in a step and punch. We're going to do two counts. In the first count, you're going to go in and out with your feet, almost done, but not quite. On the second count, we're going to push your opposite end forward, finish your stance and punch. The boys are going to go on, as far, two, punch. On, two, on, two, on, two, on. Over your hands up. Two, and now we're going to this way. On, Two. One. Strong or mid. Two. One. Two. Don't stop. 
you didn't stop, you didn't break. Sometimes you have people a little straight. So, uh, quite often I give this speech, so I'll tell you. We supposedly practice a martial art. This implies some sort of refinement and grace in our movement, right? So we should move from here to here very strongly and yet gracefully, which is different than you know, any old way. So over time, as we keep refining things, it's to kind of make it better, more graceful, more controlled, more efficient. Rising blocks, I, okay, we already practiced in place. Now we're gonna practice it moving across the floor. You're gonna go one and step forward. This is kind of covering your head. Two, try in and up, striking with your forearm or towards your elbow. Okay, here we go. Left leg forward, eight. Step forward three quarters of the way, reach up with your left hand. On reach, your right arm is in, your hips are straight. Pull this down and twist. Two. Step forward to reach. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Left leg over and turn. Good job. Now try one count, just like you were doing. Step forward, twist your hips and walk. One. A little bit higher with this. Two. Three. Four. Five. Back leg over and turn. Now try to stay where you are while you move or squeeze a little tighter. So this hand should maybe go like this. Squeeze, go. You, oh, 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 no, you let it drift. Don't do it. One count this way. Ready? One. Yeah. 
that's pretty good. So the QTI that nobody else does, don't feel bad. It's just fine, okay? It's a good spirit, good thing. <sighs> we didn't talk very much before about getting in or out of second position, so I'd like to talk about it now. The, uh, when I first learned, and what many of the old folks did, is a big, full circle with your arms. And actually, we didn't quite do it that way with our feet either. We just moved to one side and did that. So they changed their feet. If I am on top of a mark, this brown mark, I have to stay there and come back to there. If I do this, it implies I'm avoiding, I don't want to fight, leave me alone. This is just center to center. It's a technicality, but not that big. Over time, people decided that opening your arms up like this was an unnecessary bad habit. It's like, hit me, hit me, hit me, oh, okay, no, no. So they want you to keep that idea that your elbows are crossing, that your arms and feet match. So if my feet start here, they have to end at the same time. I can't go, and I can't go. They have to end at the same time. <laughs> Easier now because you don't have to do the whole first three quarters, you just do this part. But it's still part of the circle. So your elbows cross and come down, stand up in front of you, a fist or two in front of you, and your body center is going down sort of 45 degrees. So part of the idea here is that I'm covering so somebody, I'm not like, oh yeah, hey, come on, no, it's a little bit like, oh, oh, oh. You keep covering. There are some practical reasons to do this kind of thing. Um, John's gonna be good. Let's say that he has grabbed my wrist. I'm gonna go stop that. You can grab my wrist with both hands. I can say stop that. Both hands. It's covered, yeah. But more than that, hold on, hold on. Uh, we're engaged somehow. And I stand up like this, I don't wide open target to a front kick or a punch or something. So I want to stand up with the idea that he might hurt me at any time. And when he does, I'm right. Okay, so that's a Zanshin kind of thing. You want to build the habit, always ready, always ready, always ready. It's not like, oh God, what do we do? Uh, I don't know. Okay. No, he might attack. <clears throat> Moving forward and backwards is so okay, which we also practice. So a commonality between the two techniques that we're doing today so far, the rising block, your hip and your arm move the same way. They move the same way. Their outside block moves the same way. It's called the same way rotation. So we basically have the same way and opposite rotation. The rising block moves the same way as your hip. The outside block moves the same way as your hip. The inside block goes opposite. It goes this way, when your hip goes this way. Not today, a different day. Right, the next hand block goes opposite. And the downward block goes opposite. My hip went that way, and now it went that way. On all of these, we twist. Sorry, can you show you Step and punch, just because it's a good example. If I block this, and I stay square, there's a lot of me left not protected. If I twist sideways, I start to fit behind my arm a little bit. And it leaves this all wound up for my counter. So we walk this way, we walk this way, we walk this way, we walk this hip sideways. Cool. If you use it for a strike, you go here. You still almost always be sideways. So if he threw a punch at the rising block, I might make contact with my knee, slide up against his neck and head, and twist my hip. Because it's stronger, I get more penetration. But it is possible that I use this to knock it down, and I'm gonna come back across, and my hip will be straighter, because that's just the direction I'm using my arm in. But it's not a basic idea. Basic is we twist, we twist, we twist. Sometimes.
sometimes you go straight. Sometimes we're pros too. Outside block, now second position. Now put your right arm up and your left arm up. You're going to step forward with your right and do an outside block this way. Wow! Now let's come back up. Just put your right arm up and your left arm up. Step off to the left side. Here go. Step back up. Three. Step back up. Four. Four. Back up. Five. Back up. Okay, we're going to move forward. And we're going to put your left arm up, okay? Step forward. Block. On. Now you're going to pass halfway and coil this way. One. Two. Twist. This hand extends, this one comes up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So if you did use this for a block, and you're going to step forward, this hand coming into my face is like the quickest and easiest thing to do. That one lines up, this one stays. On. Yep. Yep. Two. Backwards, this guy right away. 
it's coming along really good. Questions, problems? So when we haven't trained that much, it's you know been here half a dozen times or something, it takes a while. You two switch places for a second. We're gonna do hand shoulder on a few times. Hand shoulder on is the kata that you have to know. There are five Heian Kata. A Kata is a series of movements against imaginary attackers. It used to be the core of karate. That's all there was. Kata, for, uh, self defense training for the partner. That was still Kata. And then body conditioning. <laughs> Lifting weight, moving things. And then, towards modern times, they got UK and sparring and the basic skill that it used to be doing. Uh, we'll go through this once, and then we'll go through parts a few times, and then we'll switch, and Tom can do so. Out, Heian Shoda. So Heian uh, refers to a time in Japanese history, uh, 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 a period when there was no war, and very peaceful. And uh, they named them Heian Kata because training in them is supposed to give you such a base of self-defense and movement that it will make you peaceful, that you will not be afraid all the time. So, Shodan just means first level, first three black belt of Shodan in Heian Kata. Okay, you're gonna step off to your left and do a hellar drop this way. On, seven five, two. Now your front foot has to go way behind you this way. Just turn around. One. Then you do this. Two. Hammer to straight. Three. Then you do a downward block to the front this way. One. Three rising blocks. You already know how to do this part. One. Two. Three. Now you have to spin towards the mirror with your left foot and do a downward block. One. Two. Do the same thing behind you this one with your right foot. One. Two. One. Back where you came from. Three stepping punches. One. Two. Three. Okay, now you have to do four knife hand blocks with a back stance. You use the edge of your hand or the bottom of the edge of your hand this way. And you start in the back stance this way. One. Yep. Two. One. Two. Hip. Tire. Hey. If I had gold stars to give, I would give you a gold star. You're very, very good at following that. Um, in this kata, whenever you block, your hip should be sideways. 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 When you punch, it should be straight. The front stance is you did pretty darn good. They say that it's a 60 40 weight distribution. You move your weight forward until 6 or 7 is forward. In a back stance, which is the last four moves, it's 70 30. You pull your weight way back here. So I usually teach it that you're going to stay here and put your foot up. And the initiation of this is similar to what we talked about before with the cat stand. Is somebody throws a punch at you and they go like this. This is the beginning of this defensive action. It's natural to put your foot, foot back. It's natural to pick your hands up. It's natural for your weight to go here. So they should all build on natural reactions. They don't usually teach them that way. But I do. They're all natural actions. One of the three big lies we tell. These are all natural reactions. Uh, I forgot the other two. 
That was the third one. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can dress up for training. Anyway, uh, one more thing about the product I will tell you that is useful to know is that it is the shape of a capital letter I with a short stem on the top and bottom and a long line in the middle. Some people think it's in the shape of an H. Those people are confused. Because obviously that middle part is way longer than the two top. So if I start here, I go to this side, then I go to that side. Then I go down that long stem with three of these. Now I have the top part to do. I go that way and that way, and that way and that way. Now I have to go back down the long stem, but this time I finish. One, two, three. So I'm pretty much back where I started. Four, nine, ten blocks. One towards that wall. Again, in back steps. One is sort of 45 degrees. Another one towards that wall. Another one for the batteries. Then you're supposed to end and start right where you started, assuming your stances are consistent. Here we go. Out. Take one step back. Take one step forward. And move in a tiny bit. And shut up. Shut up. In front. So this hand is going to block cover off to the side here. One, pop up. Yep, pop up. Two, seven punch. A little more wide. Wide and clear. Give this to the front. Yep. And back. Now this hand goes way over here and blocks One. Yep, perfect. Then they say somebody grabs their wrist, you're going to Pull away and hit him. Two. Perfect. Give him the bottom part of your fist here. Yep. Three. Seven punch. Yep. Now this hand. Blocks way out here. One. Three rising blocks. One. Three. Two. Three. Go up. One more. Three. Yep. Now this hand comes way over here and blocks. One, two, step and punch. Now this hand blocks over there. One, two, yep. Now this hand blocks towards the back. One, three, step and punch. One, two, three. Good hit. This hand is going to block. You're going to keep this leg super, super bent and turn towards me. One. <laughs> yep, this one goes here. Now this one blocks. Two. Now this one blocks again. One. Turn back. Oh, no, no, no. They turn either. In this cut, I always turn back. Oh. Oh. Two. Yep. Yep. All right. So a lot of the blocks, um, a lot of the turns didn't used to be 90 degree turns or three quarter turns. They were more like somebody's behind you. Oh my God! You be turning blocking. So if everybody, you know, wasn't contagious with some deadly disease, you would spend a lot more time having somebody punch at your head. Whoa. You do that because it's a flinch. What? And then you do the same thing again and strike. So you go block, strike. Block, strike. Like that. The, kind of the same theory with these. Uh, block, strike. That is good. Block, strike. Two moves. Boom, 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 boom. Most of these turns are throws. Throws on. Uh, that's John, my roommate. So I already have whatever disease he has. <laughs> um, and you already have one. You didn't meet John Noel. That's John Noel. John Noel, this is Renee. He's like always there. Sometimes his wife Cindy is there too. 
Alright, one more time through hand on shoulder on, and we'll roll again. Feet together. Oh. Ta da! Nice shot. Nice shot. Good boy. One, two, one, two, three, one, three, rise and fall. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, three punches. One, two, three. Very good. One, nine, ten, block, five, six, two. Same hand. One, two. Hey! Hey. So you're still doing awesome on that. Any questions? So the cloud thing you followed pretty good. I suspect you had something similar when you were eight that was you did. Yeah. The blocks and kicks uh, still need more time. Uh, but you're doing really well. So uh, let's see how you do over the next couple of weeks. We might learn a different kata and keep going. So the usual standard is that people train at least three times a week for three months in between tasks. <laughs> Here at the university, there's more than three months, so it's an awkward time. So people that are picking it up quick are trying to teach them the next thing, and if they're able to, they test two times. Just take two, or don't. Uh, you know, with COVID, we haven't had any tests for a year and a half or longer. So, I am um, trying to train people and get them to progress. And then when we have a test towards the end of the year, end of the semester, I think the end of next spring semester, is that what they call it, spring semester, uh, we will have a test and I'll kind of figure out where everybody belongs. So you would go up one or two tests depending on how it goes. Uh, you two switch places, please. Dano Kado Blakely. Yushiko. Again, this one is simple. <laughs> the only thing about it is this one's shorter. It's shorter than the other one we had. Out. Yushiko. Yushiko. Boy. used to be like. So if you threw a punch at me and I went, whoa, that's pretty effective. If I went one, two, three, that's effective. Um, throw a punch, one, two, three, that's effective. So it feels actually more practical than it does. 
Uh, but I think these kata were actually designed to teach you or to retain self-defense techniques. And Heian Shodan specifically was more created just for basics. Just how do I move? What do I do? The other Heians are not like that. They're more like this. But they are simple. Out. Back. And what does Nidu show me? This is a front stance, and a front stance has always been a front stance. Oh. I don't do it that way. Yeah, so chin. So chin or a modified back stance. I like the idea that I'm putting my wrist out of the way, so you can drop better. Um, I will say, Nishiyama taught it the front stance. Uh, but then he had these people puff up and punch down, do you know about that? Uh, which was his thing, but I don't think anybody else in the world does it. I've never seen it. It's a good thing. But this does feel better. And it kind of matches this idea, or I think. But this also makes more sense. It's long, it's a different guy. So his point is, if you threw a bunch of me, and I did cover it, I'd stay here and hit you. Why would I put that self close to that hand? Just a random swing. At least up here I can see it coming. You shouldn't be able to, because uh, I put your hand over there. Then, then we're back to the, that at first. I, I'd have to cover it. Yeah. Then that hand. Now we're back to the wound. Yeah. So it's defendable both ways. Yeah. <clears throat> Switch places. Everybody do your own cut. Out. Attack. Okay. Sure. 
Heyaman Chora. Oi! Very nice. Very nice. Twist your hip. Yep. Good job. Excellent. On this, you could coordinate your hips and body and arms a little better. You tended to go and then do your hands a little late. They should match a little bit more, but it, it's way better than it used to be. Um, this was good. This was good. On this, that's fantastic. And then you lean forward. Try to get this hip to turn. Snap, snap. Same thing on this side. Snap. This was great, this was great, this was great. This was great. You're a little too, take more time on the punch. So uh, kick, bend your front knee so that you land in a stance and punch. You're a little bit back here instead of finishes. And then this, uh, I think you ran out of room, but uh, as you know, squeeze, shock. Nice, solid position. Good, though. Your whole kata today was very good, very, very solid. So keep it up. All right, here we go. Hi, up, everybody. Just an informal bow, actually. Let's turn so we kind of all can see us. Well, we got it. All right. Class dismissed, everybody. Thank you for joining. See you Monday. Good luck.